Hello, you're listening to a very special interview episode of Popcorn Podcast with Lee and Tim, where we sit down with the director of Missing Will Merrick and its producer, Natalie Kasabian. I'm Timmy Fland, movie buff. And I'm Lee Livingstone, entertainment journalist. And we love to talk all things movies. We do, and Missing follows a young girl's search for answers when her mother disappears while on vacation in Colombia with her new boyfriend. Hindered by international red tape and stuck thousands of miles away in Los Angeles, June creatively uses all the technology at her fingertips to try to find her mother before it's too late. Missing is directed by Will Merrick and Nick Johnson, from a screenplay by American Johnson and a story by Sev Hanian and Anish Chaganti. Missing stars Storm Reed, Nia Long, Joaquim D. Almeida, Amy Landecker and Daniel Henney. Missing furthers the exciting new screen life genre populated by critically acclaimed films, including Missing's predecessor, which was called Searching, which earned more than $75 million at the box office in 2018 from a budget of just $880,000. That's incredible. So impressive. For those not familiar with the genre, screen life is similar to the found footage style of shooting where the camera is a real object in unfolding events, not just this imaginary window into the film's world. That's right, and screen life is becoming increasingly relatable in our modern world as technology dominates our every move and the pandemic forced us into that online space for connection more than ever. Yeah, so the creative team behind Searching and now its standalone sequel Missing are really pioneering this genre, I think, and using technology and design in groundbreaking ways to create a compelling story told entirely through screens. And that's a real challenge to pull off successfully. It absolutely is. And Missing's co-writer and co-director, Will Merrick, who created the cinematic language of these films as director of Virtual photography on searching joins popcorn podcast alongside producer natalie kasabian to discuss how they further innovated the genre with the more ambitious missing yeah they also shared how the visual style of this movie evolved while navigating the challenges of keeping the audience engaged and the tension tight in a thriller that plays out entirely on screen so let's take a listen Trip. I don't know where she is. Hi, Natalie. Hi, Will. How are you? Hi. Hi. Good. good. I have you. family in Australia, so it's cool to be talking to you. <laughs> Whereabouts? In uh, Sydney. Oh, yeah. That's where I'm from, too. Congratulations on missing almost being out in the world, or it will be by the time this interview comes out. How did the story for Missing evolve? Did you end up with the movie that you set out to make? Yeah, the story came from an outline created by the writers of the original movie, Sev and Anish, and they approached Nick and I with this outline that they had created, kind of flipping the dynamic of the original movie on its head. So now it's a a daughter looking for her missing mom. And everything sort of came from exploring that. How would she go about doing that through technology? You're working with a lot of the same creatives, obviously, from searching on this one, but you've all played a bit of musical chairs with your roles. How did you come to direct how did we come to that? Well, I can speak to that. <laughs> so, you know, when we were when we were approached by Sony to make a sequel to Searching from 2018, we knew um, right away that Anish, who directed Searching, didn't want to direct again. So the, the first question was, well, if Anish isn't directing, who is? And in our minds, the only people that could do this were Will and Nick, because they edited the first film and they were directors of virtual photography, which is basically a title we gave them to honor what they did, which was really help come up with the entire cinematic language that you see unfold on these screens with all the apps and the tech and the UI. So there really would be no searching without them. So it was a no brainer and lucky enough, they said yes. Will, it really does look incredible. And yours and Nick's uh, editing style has been such a big part of innovating that whole search life genre. Was it tough to hand over the editing reins to someone else? (laughs) Um, it was wonderful to have our editors, Ariel and Austin. <laughs> we handed over the editing from a technical perspective. We were still deeply, deeply involved, yeah. but but just to grow the team and have uh, Ariel and Austin, our editors, involved in 
helping us as well, helped us sort of take on this project because it is more ambitious than, than Searching was in a lot of ways. How did the visual style evolve from Searching? Like we say on Searching, we kind of discovered a lot of it as we were making that movie. We kind of developed a lot of it. And this movie is kind of like, what could we do now that we know what we know from that? So we were kind of starting from a further along place. And we just wanted to have a lot more fun with it, make it a lot more kinetic. I mean, it's a it's a young girl using the computer now. She's technologically super literate. So we put the challenge to ourselves of how can we show how fast she is, but not lose you as the audience, basically. Natalie, besides its thrilling twists and turns, of which there are plenty in Missing, what's at the heart of Missing in terms of the story? You know, I think at the end of the day, we wanted to tell another story of, about a family. So it really is about the emotional connection between June and her mom. And one of the things early on that we all talked about was this feeling of when you're a kid or a teenager, or sometimes an adult, it happens at different times for people. There's this like epiphany that you have where you realize your parents are human and they're not perfect, right? Like they, they're they complicated human beings as we all are. And so that was a really fun thing to tap into and to watch June learn while, while she's looking for her mom, she's kind of learning like David Kim did in searching that she didn't really know her mom to the greatest depth. So at the end of the day, it was taking it back to that story of family connection and trying to ground it in that feeling that I think a lot of people can relate to. And Will, when you're seeing everything play out on various screens while watching a screen from an audience perspective, it's almost like adding another barrier between the audience and the action going on, which I guess can be challenging. But you guys managed to keep the tension so tight. What are some of the ways that you did that to make it an effective thriller? Uh That's interesting. I guess in some ways you're adding a barrier when you see them in live action, but I think the way we see it is in another way, you're getting to see a glimpse into someone's personal life that you really otherwise don't get to see. Like when you're behind your computer alone, you know, you, you reveal things that maybe you would hide even from other people. And so we lean on that as much as possible to give a glimpse into how the characters are feeling, what they're experiencing. It had me on the edge of my seat. So thanks, guys. Thank you for your time (laughs) today. Really appreciate it. Thank Thank you so much. You're going through Kevin's email? You need to let the police handle this. I tried, but we're running out of time. It's really fascinating to hear how much creativity and innovation went into making Missing. And I'm excited to see what Merrick does next in this space, actually. Well, to hear more about Missing, don't forget to check out our interview with the film star Storm Reid over on our YouTube channel. The link is in the show notes for you. And don't forget to listen to our audio interview with Reid and co-star Nia Long, who plays her mother in the film. It's available on all good podcast platforms. And if you want to catch Missing, it's in Australian cinemas from February 23. All right, friends, that's another special episode of Popcorn Podcast for you. We really hope you enjoyed these interviews. And as always, thank you so much for listening. We'll catch you next time. We have a website, popcornpodcast.com. Make sure you check it out. We've got all our episodes up there for you. If you'd like to get to know us a little better, there's an About Us section and we run ticket giveaways. So keep an eye on the website for more information. 